Hi guys, I'm Donata, welcome back. We've got another fun little tutorial for you today. Slightly different from what we've been doing in the past, but similar in terms of our materials, but our format's gonna change. So typically we work on, let me just show you. Um, typically we're working on like a little mini size, which is about two and a half by three and a half inches. Today we're going to almost double that, actually more than double that, and work on a four by six size and landscape format. The piece we're gonna work on, I'm gonna show you the inspiration for it. It's actually based on a piece that I found that I thought was really beautiful and would make a really nice exercise for us to work on. Um, it has like a vintage sort of meadow feel and I really like it because it's going to allow us to develop some of our watercolors a little bit better. We're gonna be using three or four, maybe even five different watercolor hues and our brush strokes and our soft pastel uh, strokes are going to get a little bit broader because we're working on a larger format. And I feel like once we get to it, I'll sort of explain why, but we're using our sort of tools in a much more intentional way. Um, and while even though you're sort of working on a larger format, um, you almost have to kind of keep zooming in and out of the piece in order to maintain that composition that looks correct at the proper scale of your paper. So let's flip over. I'm gonna take you through the watercolors like usual. We'll work on that portion. And while we let the paper dry, we're going to work on the soft pastels. We're gonna select our colors and then we'll get All right, so here we are looking down on our workspace. Uh, we're gonna start, um, this is a reference photo we're gonna be using. Um, I'll take you through. We're gonna take our own sort of spin on it, but it's beautiful and I really wanted to use it for, for today. So starting with our watercolors, we're gonna pick out a couple of colors. Um, we're gonna be using our burnt um, our burnt umber and our raw umber. It's like a warmer sort of terracotta color. And then I'm gonna balance that out with um, an olive green, which I love using. Uh, neutral sap green and then we need a darker shade um, my sort of favorite sepia um, so we're going to be using that for our sort of darker uh, low lights so let's move our watercolors aside and let's get our colors onto our palette some of these colors I already have but I want to take you through um, I want to take you through this process as well because I don't think I did that in the last few videos so I'm just putting all of our colors into their little compartments. I typically tend to uh, combine colors that I know I almost always end up sort of combining once I activate or reactivate with water, um, especially sort of my darker colors. So like the burnt umber, the sepia, my Mars black, even my Payne's gray, um, I'll put into sort of one little compartment because uh, I end up mixing those colors together anyway. So uh, last one, my sepia. Uh, if these obviously dry on your palette, don't worry. Um, watercolor is wonderful in that way in that nothing is ever wasted once it's dried on your palette. You just reactivate it with water. So let's move that aside and let's get our surface ready. So here's the paper we're gonna be using. It is my favorite Feathers and Stone Cotton Rag 300 GSM paper. It is, let me just get a little closer here. It has the most beautiful deckle edge, it's so soft um, and really sort of delicate and it absorbs um, watercolor really beautifully, not too quickly, but uh, it ends up leaving a lot of texture on the paper. So um, a little piece of white paper behind, I like to work on a white surface. I'm gonna be using this double-sided tape, which is just, sometimes impossible to get uh, to get that like backing off but let me just okay here we go so um, paper on top of that so it doesn't move around on us and and we need to just I guess a few more things so um, our cloth for wiping and then my favorite 18 round Princeton Neptune brush I love this brush it um, it gets very saturated absorbs a lot of water and pigment and just and also beautifully lifts paper, or sorry, not paper, lifts paint off the paper. So once we're ready, we're just gonna activate our palette. So let me just move this down. Okay, so we're just going to um, activate our color 
and get the sort of right hues or sort of the right color value in each of these. We're going to mix some of these colors together and create um, colors that are going to make a really nice underpainting. So uh, very warm, warm browns, um, some greens. We're going to mix here. I'm just mixing some of my uh, sepia and my brown and my raw umber or actually burnt umber is the one in the middle top. Uh, the brown so i'm just mixing all those together to create like a really thick um and kind of lush pool of paint that i'm going to be working from because i know i'm going to be using a lot of this color um, next to that i'm going to activate this raw umber um, for some of my mid-tones um, sort of a rustic brown really nice once i mix it in with some of the darker brown um, and then just a few more colors, a bit lighter, a little bit more water um, to move my paint around the page uh, nicely. So I just want to have sort of a mid, a mid color value there. Okay, so we are ready. Um, have your reference photo or the reference photo I gave you sort of nearby. Um, we're going to start by working in sort of the darkest, uh, darkest parts of the piece. And we're going to work rather quickly. Watercolor has this incredibly amazing <laughs> um, sort of ability to force you to work kind of quickly, almost uncomfortably fast. Um, and you have to be very confident and just kind of in work intuitively. So I'm moving around really quickly. I know I have a little bit of time to go in and adjust, but... Really, this is meant to be very loose. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, we're going to be obviously applying our soft pastel once this dries. So don't get too sort of caught up and stuck on perfecting this part. It's really meant to be the very base of our painting. So we want these colors to come through where we don't uh, apply soft pastel, but it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, I forgot to mention I did add um, I had some blue on my palette that's dry uh, I think this is indigo and I'm just going in and adding a bit of a, a sky there with um, sort of a, a semi clean brush um, so I'm adding a bit of blue so I'll add that into the notes in the bottom but I did for we did forget to add that at the beginning okay so here I'm just sort of going in and because I know that this piece is going to dry actually very different from the way it looks right now. Um, I'm adding a little bit of uh, a, a little bit more pigment because most of the time the piece will dry and and lighten. So what I'm seeing right now I know is going to be a lot lighter. So I'm not I'm not scared to kind of go in and add pigment where I where I feel I need it. What I'm doing now is I'm just taking my brush, I'm removing paint and water, and I'm using uh, an almost dry brush and I'm lifting some paint just to get the shape and the sort of yeah the shape of these trees the way I want it and um, the composition to have this pleasing effect to my eye so that you can do when you're working on your piece sort of take a second stop look at it and see if you need to remove or add paint anywhere to really um and this is intuitive this is sort of just looking at something and and your eye going to a space that's not quite looking or feeling right um just manipulate that a little bit and sculpt it as you see fit so that's sort of what i'm doing here and just softening the edges between this lighter highlight uh sort of just off center page and the darker edges so i moved that aside we're going to let that dry. It's going to take about 15 to, I'd say, 30 minutes, depending on the humidity in your space. So I'm taking my soft pastels and I'm just picking out some dark greens, some mid-tone greens, and some lighter colors that are going to complement that. Um, watercolor, but also the piece that I'm using as my reference. Um, and that I, I mean, these are colors that I almost always use. So I know they look good together and... Um, they work nicely when you're starting to sort of work from a darker low light into a softer lighter space in your in your piece here's some sort of mid browns dark 
medium and a light brown that I always like. I like these three together. And then some highlight colors, some white and a little bit of blue where I want to bring the sky into, uh, into the foreground. So I'm going to move this aside um, and bring our watercolor piece back. Um, once we're ready, I may add, like I just added this green, I may add a few colors as we go. That's okay, that's fine. Um, but this is sort of the palette we're going to be working with. Okay, so moving to the side, let's bring our little piece back. It's dry. It looks very different. Um, as you can see, it's even lighter than uh, what it was. Um, kind of trying to get a little closer here. The texture is unreal. I just love it. I'm often tempted to leave it just like this, but then curiosity takes over and I and I always want to take it to the next step. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do now is set my piece again on a white background. I'm gonna use the same tape that sometimes takes forever to remove, but let's try it again. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, there we go. So I'm just gonna remove that and set my piece of paper back down fasten it in place and then using my reference photo again I'm going to start with kind of working off the darker spaces so I'm going to take my darker pastel colors and I'm going to apply them onto the dark darker surface paint that I've already have on my paper because my piece is a little bit bigger I'm not going to be using sort of these really small sort of pointy um, brush strokes. I'm going to be using, in most cases, the full edge of my pastel. And I'm doing this because I want the full sort of stroke of the soft pastel to come through. I don't want this to become a very pixelated sort of spotty piece. So I'm being very sort of mindful of how I'm placing my pastel onto the page and then how I'm sort of rubbing that pastel down to create my brush my not my brush stroke but my pastel stroke okay so i'm just going to go in now and using my finger i'm going to basically smudge some of these um, pastel strokes not all of them some of them I want to kind of keep intact but um, particularly the ones sort of towards the edge I'm, I want them to sort of blend and bleed softly into the watercolor so I'm just doing that loosely as I go through some people like to use like a sponge or um, a smudging uh, pencil essentially do this but I find I'm perfectly fine using my fingers um, and basically now I'm just gonna go in and start to lighten um, the trees on the either side of the piece I'm gonna use my mid browns and my mid greens to begin um, to lighten working towards the top of the tree and I'm working rather quickly here but also being very intentional with um, the amount of pigment that I'm leaving and um, the intensity at which I sort of place my pastel onto my paper. So I'm constantly sort of looking left and right. I'm assessing sort of very quickly with my eye the composition and whether I want to pull any of these branches out towards the middle of my page. So um, I'm noticing here that I want to begin to work sort of in the midsection, these trees that are in the very background, um, because I feel like they're gonna inform the shape of the trees on either side and, and, and the composition between these three things. So I'm placing this mid sort of lighter terracotta color and um, some of my lighter uh, peach beige colors to establish that background tree line. And then I'm gonna use um, my darker colors to sort of bleed those two things together and make it look 
pleasing to the eye. Okay, that's sort of starting to come together. I know it still can sometimes look at like a mess at this stage, but um, really the very uh, the, the highlights are going to bring this together, and then some of my more refined strokes um, towards the end also will help bring the piece together. So um, there's still a few things we need to do in these trees, um, and using my light grains, I'm going to start placing my really light branches towards the top of the tree where the sun would hit your tree and and sort of working left and right left and right and getting that to look and feel natural I feel like this color is really starting to help bring the whole piece together um, and as I move it through towards the mid sort of mid section and put these darker darker um, trees in the in the very background it's starting to make a lot of sense it might sort of appear as though I'm working kind of all over the place and I guess in in some ways I am um, but I think that's just how I have always painted um, it's just sort of, it's intuitive for me in that way that I sort of go where my eye takes me and I don't think too much about sort of my, what my hand and my pastel is doing. It's more my eyes guiding me um, and where I want to go next. So it may appear sort of scattered, but I guess, I mean, that's, I guess that's part of how I, how I paint. Um, I'm starting to put in this lighter field and I'm using my sort of very, um, well, to me it's very bright, but it's sort of a, it's not really that bright of a yellow. And I'm using my white to create, I want to have these two, just going to, just noticing it's a little dirty. So I'm using my cloth to really wipe down the edge of this white pastel. And I'm going to create two little highlights on either side of this little bush of trees that I'm going to drag down ever so slightly. So I'm just placing my pastel on the page, pushing it down and then dragging downward. And I'm going to leave that because I'm, I'm going to want to work on that sort of towards the end and determine whether I need to add any more or less. So the sides of my, basically this little um, pond of water or riverbank or whatever you want to call it, has these darker greens around it so I'm going in and I'm just creating the edge sort of the, the very edge of this body of water um, and I'm using my browns to create some tall grasses some sort of loose shrubs and uh, shadows and highlights for the two little river banks that are on either side of the paper Okay, so moving downward, I'm going to start creating some more sort of florals, some tall grasses that are growing right along the edge, and I'm using my taupes, my white, and my really light grays um, for these little bits. I don't want it to be super, super sharp, so... As I work in towards the water, I'm using the same color and I'm just dragging it towards the the reflection in the in the pond. And then obviously, because it is a reflection, you want to be using the same colors that you used above it. So I'm using those, but I'm kind of I'm stacking them vertically and starting to create the highlights. 
using a very sharp edge, I'm going to start to bring out and accentuate some really tall, um, tall grass here. And I'm, I'm using, I just broke off the pastel because I want a really sharp, clean edge. And again, I'm going to wipe off my white because I'm going to use that to do the same thing because I don't want them all to be the exact same color. And now I'm going to go in and start to create petals, florals, little, little, little tiny strokes of pastel that are going to add a lot of dimension to the foreground of this piece. Okay, and now vertically, I'm going to start creating some reflection in the water. I'm going to use the same colors, obviously, that I used before, but I'm just going to further develop this. Um, and using my white, create two sort of really bright, glowy highlights. And I'm going to smudge those because I, I want them to look as though they're sort of has a soft effect in the water, right? Not a very sharp, um, sharp look. So that's that. I always, I always like to go in and then just create a few really using the white, a few petals, a few florals, a few little marks in and around the space, um, for, for some interest and then I'm going to go in and those tiny little highlights where the sun's hitting the field in the back, I'm going to just brighten those just ever so slightly. And then I'm going to move my way up and do the same thing in the clouds and create a few highlights where the sun would sort of peek through the clouds. And then a few through maybe a few leaves on the edges of some of the trees on the edge. Um, so I'm going to just take this sort of edge, corner edge of my pastel and go in just like so and create a few little marks where there's some light coming through the foliage in the tree. And then the last thing is I'm just using my very darkest pastel and I'm bringing down um, the tree trunks of these trees into the foreground. Um, I feel like this is going to make a huge difference. I'm already liking the way it looks on the left. It just grounds the trees and gives you a space for your eye to settle um, when it's looking at the top of the piece. So um, I feel like that actually made a huge difference. And then a few little details just around the riverbank, um, somewhere where the water would ripple or settle I'm, I'm sort of feeling like I'm reaching the end of this piece I really like it I'm just adding um, my favorite here it's a pink let me just get it to focus for you um, this is my go-to pink and I just I feel like it needs a little pop of color I don't want it to look too muted so I'm going to go in and add this pink and maybe a purple we'll see um, in some of these florals in the foreground I think, yeah, I'm going to go for the purple. I'm just going to grab that here. And sort of adjacent to the pink, I'm going to add a few more drops of color and a little further up the piece where the field starts. Maybe there's a few little flowers, flower clusters that are starting to grow there as well. Okay, I think that's that's that. I'm going to leave it before I do something I'm going to regret. <laughs> I think it turned out really nice. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope it was something a little different than what we're typically doing. Um, leave your comments. If you find this uh, interesting, if you have any suggestions, please do that below and see you next time.